We are back. I think, I think I've got it. I think I've got it. For those who saw my last video, I tried to make this kind of fantasy film effect from leftover vinyl. So I've just been having another play around. So instead of adhering the, the vinyl to cellophane, because the cellophane wasn't really giving me the effect that I wanted, I had a little hunt around and I remember I bought this. It's like a, it's a UV protective window film. It's meant for like art museums. They put it on the windows to prevent any fading of the paintings. Um, I actually bought it for a different project, but I thought, well, as I'm experimenting, I might as well experiment with this also. So what I began with was just seeing if the vinyl on its own would give us the effect without the cellophane. So I peeled the paper off. I mean, it, it did, it gave us the effect, but we've still got that stickiness on the back, which is just gonna be a pain to work with. And it did curl up a lot around the edges, which you may be able to stretch out, but it's, it's, not still, it's not quite what I want. So then I tried the window film on its own, and this actually um, really did give me the effect that I was looking for. And it also gave some amazing color, which I was not expecting. Now, when using a heat gun with this stuff, I would recommend if you buy this window film to wear a mask because it did give off some smoke. And what I think that was from was it's burning away some of the, maybe the chemicals that are on the surface of the window film. But look at that. So we're gonna work with that today and just see what we get with the film on its on its own. And all I did was just heat that over the surface with the heat gun until it gave me this effect. Then I came to these. So I added the vinyl to the window film and I got some incredible results. Absolutely incredible. This is just like the fantasy film that you can get, that you can buy. But the thing is, it's not transparent. So, you know, you don't have to have a black background. You can work with it as it is. You can cut this out, store it away, use it another, uh, an, another, another day. You can flatten it down as well. I, I mean, you could probably put it inside some heavy books, but I'm going to show you how I did it anyway. So this, this film comes with a backing. Let me get that off. There we go. So it's, it's essentially a mirrored film. So what I did was mirror side up and then I took my vinyl, peeled off the paper from the back of this also. I've got my gloves on, so bear with me, guys. <laughs> there we go. And then I just adhered that. Try not to get any bubbles in there. And just flatten that down. Now, all I did next was just grab my heat gun. And this is gonna be su such a cheaper way of doing this. I mean, that big roll cost me maybe $15, the window film. And the, vin the vinyl itself, I don't know, maybe $10 for a multi-pack, um, lots of different colours. So I'm just going to heat this, ignore any bubbles. I'm just going to evenly go over the surface and it will start to give me a good effect. Be patient. Where's my stick? Somebody mentioned use sticks to hold it down instead of burning my fingers. You can see it starting to ripple up. It will start to curl. Don't worry about that. We can kind of pause it, turn the turn the heat gun off. But just be careful because the tip of your heat gun is going to be extremely hot. Again, my, my craft mat is a soldering mat, so it, is, it can withstand some extremely high temperatures. So you could do this on a bigger scale, on a smaller scale. I think the bigger the sheet, the easier it is going to be. And we can just let that cool, flatten it down, and then just keep going over it until we've got the desired effect. You can already see those incredible colors coming through. This is a really, really 
easy and cool effect. I'm not saying you have to buy the window film for this. Um, have a look around and see what you've got film wise and just experiment like I do by adhering the, the vinyl to different types of plastics but it's definitely definitely given us that fantasy film effect. So I'm going to keep going, I'm not going to bore you too much, you've seen what I'm doing until I've got the effect that I want. So there we have that one with the different combination of colours, I mean see what I mean about the stickiness being a pain <laughs> with the different colors that we can create even with the window film itself I'm gonna see what I can make with that these are absolutely incredible for a fraction of the price too right let's make some bits with it so with the windows the window seal I was gonna say <laughs> the window film I'm just going to take a coaster that I've already made just to cut that to size so that will then insert into my coaster mold. And there it is, ready to work with. And don't throw away the excess because we could always use that in smaller jewellery pieces at a later date. So with the other three colours I'm just going to use a cabochon that I've already got. Do the same as what I did with the coaster. And then I think I'm going to adhere those straight into my bezel and then just dome them as they are. Because the trouble we're going to have with a lot of different types of mould is um, bubbles on the backs or if we're working from the front um, and putting it in the resin that way we're going to be trapping bubbles in there. There are ways around it. So you could always say for instance with this I'm not too worried as it's an experiment I'm going to have bubbles underneath where these kind of ridges and veins are. But you could always do an initial coat with a black resin then insert this over the top and then pour your clear over the top. There's lots of different ways to do this. So what I also want to test is whether the UV light is going to cure through this film. So I'm just going to apply some into my bezel. And then push that down. And then just cure that in place, hopefully. Hopefully it will work. And as always, massive shout out to my channel members, anyone who's bought me a coffee or a super thanks, thank you very much. Okay, so that did actually work, it's held down the film, it's baggy in areas just because there is air, I didn't put too much UV resin in there. So now I can just top these up one at a time. The tricky part was making sure there was no bits sticking over the edge. <laughs> so just play around. You're going to have some fails. It's, it's all part of playing with resin and experimenting. We're all human. We all make mistakes. And then I'm going to give that a two minute cure under my lamp. Okay, so for the coaster, I'm going to be brave and try and do this in one pour. So I've degussed my resin in my vacuum chamber. And I'm just hoping that I can kind of lay this in a way that's going to push the bubbles out as I'm laying it. And then I can pour over the top. If not, it's probably going to float. Again, my mold's dirty, but it's an experiment. Don't judge me, guys. <laughs> so I'm just going to pour in a small amount. Drip. Drip, 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 drip. There you go. Spread that about. And now, making sure it's the right way up. I want to get out any bubbles that are stuck around the edge first. Now I know I could always cover the back with resin first, but I just want to see. There's always different ways of doing stuff. I'm not sure if it's going to get out any of those trap bubbles. We might get lucky. You never know. Look at that colour though, <laughs> that's crazy. Do you know what, I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to apply a small amount though and leave it for a couple of minutes and just see what happens. I'm just going to push it down further into the resin. Hopefully that will push out any bubbles from the sides and they will come over the top. Yep, so I'm happy with that. It's not going anywhere. I'm going to top that up and then we'll be back for the D-Molds. There's just one. One D-Mold. <laughs> 
Well, okay, the coaster's not fully set, but I can show you, because it doesn't really need demolding. It's it's almost there, but I don't want to demold it because it's still a little bit soft and I'm a little bit impatient. You know me. Right, so let's start with the pendants. I'm really not keen on the way that these have turned out. Um, I mean, they're not terrible. I just don't like those little gaps that you get around the edges. I mean, the effects and the colours are absolutely stunning. But I do prefer doing it the way I did in the last video. So this one here, we had a barbell. Never mind. But it's just showing that it can work. Um, this one I did as well. I liked the shape. It looked like a tree with branches coming out. But again, it's very gappy. I'm sure I could probably go around that with maybe a gold or something and just hide that. But... It's really, really stunning. And I think, to be honest with you, like I said, I think it'll be a fraction of the cost. This one's a bit better. The colours are just so intense. It's unbelievable. So I did have some fails. I went back to the way that I did it in my previous video, but what I did was I pushed the film too far into the resin. And what happens is when, when you push it too far, it's going to naturally come back up and suck air underneath. So this is what happened on a couple of them. There's a big bubble there where it sucked air under the film. So just be careful. And there's one there. I mean, I could drill those out if I wanted to and just inject some some more resin in there. But again, it's, it's working. I tried the other shape mould as well. I had the same issue. Again, bubbles. I made the hole in the film to get it to go in. Really funky. The bubbles don't really stand out that, that much, to be honest with you. Um, and then I didn't push so far into the mould. And this is probably my favourite piece that I've made for a while now. The colours are so nice in all angles. And that was using... What film was it? Well, this one here. It's like a blue goes into a purple. But that is incredible. And I just drilled it from the back and stuck a pinch barrel on. I think it looks better sometimes with just that on a necklace. It looks like a real stone compared to the, the bales, the bezels. So the coaster, I mean, it's, it's not as colorful as the other pieces. But it's different. It is different. You can see the colours in different angles. It is really nice. There you go. Some yellows, blues, greens. I think it's really funky. It looks really, really nice. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, give it a thumbs up. Drop me a comment. If you haven't subscribed, hit that button for me. Have some fun with it. And I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.